Okpanachi John Paul Obaje. I'm here to return all the glory to God for giving me a good paying job and promotion in my place of service within six months. In the month of May, we had the liberation night, and the bishop said, You are the banquet of the king. I am waiting for your testimony. The next day, I received a phone call granting me appointment in a better paying job. On an anointed service like this last month, the bishop here declared that you will receive a promotion news that will shock you. Two weeks after that, declare, after that prophetic declaration, lo and behold, in my place of service, I've been promoted to serve in the capacity as head of departments, arts and human sciences. I return all the glory to God. And the woman said, she said, you are not the most qualified, but you have been found worthy. And I know it's the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. You are not the most qualified, but God has qualified you. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Please come forward, tell us your name, and straight to the point what the Lord has done. Double portion. My name is Olainka Dekunle. I'm privileged to serve in sanctuary. I have come to return glory to the Almighty God for not allowing the plans of the enemies to prevail over my life and the life of my baby. After my marriage, I was expressing miscarriages. So last year, September, end of the month, Thanksgiving, Mama said, if you are believing God for a fruit of the womb, that we should come out. So I came and she said we should dance after she prayed. The next month, I became pregnant. I was in the period of my pregnancy until June this year. I came to the church on the 23rd, and after the church service, I waited for Mama to touch my stomach, but later she just shook my hand. So that same week, I went back to tell my husband, my Mama only shake my hand, she said I have the anointing. But on the on 26, which was on Wednesday, I was in the house. I started seeing blood. I called my husband, I was seeing blood. She said we should, he said we should call helpline. Before we could call helpline, the blood filled the whole room, that it was passing through the door. And Pastor Peter prayed for me and said I will return with a testimony. After we were taken to several hospitals, even National Hospital rejected me. But God gave me victory over this baby. I, will, I deliver her. And she was taken to Neonata Ward. And they told me that she would spend three months. The, the day of the name, I called that same Pastor Peter and he prayed. After two hours later, they called me that she has increased her mail. Three months now turns three days after the anointing. I've come to turn great to the Hallelujah to God alone be all the glory. Father, we say thank you in Jesus' precious name. Praise the Lord. My name is John Godwin Adesa. My sister brought me here precisely um, 2012 uh, April last year. So I became a partial member, not until I became fully engaged to the church, but on uh, June 2012 also. So ever since I was born, fears has always been my fears, and uh, my greatest were, uh, fears and obstacles. So by the grace of God, since I joined this commission, Fears has been what I faced, and fearless is what I've become. I give God thanks because he has done a miracle things in my life. I've never given a testimony before because I always feel shy. But because God has won that, today I'm standing on the altar to give, to give God a thanks. Hallelujah. He said, since I was born over 20 years ago, I now pray and anoint myself, and God has healed me, and not only that, delivered me from all fears. Praise the Lord. Let's listen to this uh, last written in testimony. It says, children, despite medical report of low span count. Three months ago, I stood on this altar to testify of the goodness of God in my family, despite the medical report to the contrary. The doctor said I have low span count when I nearly got married. And when I listened to the teaching of God's servant, the bishop, that God did not say to man at creation, be span full. 
Rather, he said, be fruitful. My faith came alive. And I keyed into that statement. The result of it is a baby girl I came, that came forth. And while listening to people's testimony where I was serving during the last service last week, I began to pray that God should give me a new testimony to share. And just on Friday, my wife and I were blessed again with another baby girl. With another baby, please. Now, God has added unto us a boy. Praise the Lord. Shall we all lift up our hands unto him and bless him? Father, we return all the glory back unto you. Thank you for these testimonies.
hands together for the Lord and give God a shout of hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You will certainly do it better if it is from G. For Jesus, you are clapping. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, was David's statement, in God's house there must be gladness, there must be joy, there must be shouting, there must be glory, there must be... Therefore, lift up your hand. Hallelujah. For all the victory God gave to us as individuals in the course of the week, shall we lift up our hands and give thanks to him. Give thanks to him. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give him thanks and praise. Are you thanking God right now? <laughs> Give God thanks, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord. Hallelujah! In Jesus precious name we have given thanks now bring out your uh, thanksgiving banquet card it was prayer before but now it is thanksgiving everything you have listed here is already done I say it's already done and when something is done what do you do you give thanks it's already accomplished it's already done. Jesus got to the grave of Lazarus. Even though the grave was sealed, Jesus already saw Lazarus came out. And so he gave thanks. Everything you thank God for now, as you step into the week, you'll be congratulated that the answers have come. Therefore, raise your hands with your thanksgiving banquet card and begin to thank God. Begin to thank God for that job, for that promotion, for that healing, for that miracle, for that restoration, for that lifting. Raise your voice. Like the one leper, he lifted up his voice. He cried with thanksgiving. Thank him, everybody. Thank him. Thank him in the spirit. Thank him, everybody. Thank him, everybody. Oh, the new God that kept a God that clear to us, and Maria got on the monster. Say, 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord. In the name of Jesus, lift up your hands. Father, we thank you. Because you hear us always. Thank you. Thank you. Your people believe in you, and therefore they are thanking you. I decree that everything you are thanking God for now will no longer remain in the grave. <laughs> After Thanksgiving, nothing is permitted to remain in the grave. Therefore, 
everything that you are thanking God for now will no longer remain in the grave. After Lazarus came out of the grave, the house of Mary and Martha became pilgrimage house. After Thanksgiving today, your house will be visited for Thanksgiving. Receive your desires in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. And all of you who believe, say the loudest Amen. Before you take your seat and we receive the word, I'd like you to pray. Father, be it unto me according to your word today. Listen, listen to this. An angel of the Lord came to Mary and said, Mary, fear not because you have been favored. You shall conceive and bring forth a child. And in chapter 1 verse 38, Luke, Mary said, be it unto me according to your word. And the word became flesh, she conceived, and she had a child. I'd like you to speak there for Lord. Let your word, let your word do the wonders in my life today. By your word, I'm fruitful. By your word, barrenness is terminated. By your word, unfruitfulness is destroyed. Speak out now. Agra take it, take it, take it, take it, take it now. Agra take it, take it, take it, take it now. Agra take it, take it, take it, take it now. We seek a real mustakata and delia and Endelia, 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 Endelia. Andaraga boko toko toke te. Andaraga boko toko toko toke te. Andrele si ke teke, Andrala ke teke. Thank you Lord. 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 In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands here everybody. Today. I cause every root of barrenness in your life and your family. Every story of unfruitfulness in your career, in your business, in all you lay your hands on to do comes to an end today in the name of Jesus. The Lord has spoken concerning you that he will open his treasures in your direction to a point that you shall not be buried in the land. Therefore, I decree every one of you under the sound of my voice, fruitful today in the name of Jesus. I have received commandment to bless. And when I bless, he confirms it. Therefore, I decree that you are the next target for God's blessing today. You are the next target for God's blessings today. You are the next target for God's blessings today. So shall it be. Lift up your hand and give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name. Before you take your seat, announce to two, three people right now, I'm fruitful, I'm fruitful, I'm fruitful, I'm fruitful, I'm fruitful, I'm fruitful, I cannot be barren, I cannot be unfruitful, I cannot be barren, I cannot be unfruitful. Thank you, Lord. You shall have it the way you have said it. Thank you. In Jesus' precious name, please get seated. Shout hallelujah. As I speak God's word to you today, every trace of unfruitfulness in your life dies in the name of Jesus. Today being our third Osana service, 
in this great month with prophetic focus praise works wonders what has been declared will come to pass in your life the wonders of heaven will produce the blessings you desire today i didn't hear your amen if they have told you you cannot have a child change the language They've told you you cannot have a child. Tell them I will have triplets. This morning in the first service, we had a testimony of a couple that have been married for seven years and God shocked the devil by giving them three children all at once. Two boys and one girl. I thought someone is excited clapping for Jesus. We also had another testimony of a couple that Satan threatened that they would not have a child. And as they stood in the gap in war against the enemy, the wife conceived. The child was there and upon making some check, 13 or 8 fibroids were found in the womb. The baby threatened after five months, they checked up again, and the fibroids had grown from eight to 13. Yet the child will not give up. Yet their faith will not give up. At the appointed time, nine months, with or without fibroid, the child came out. Whatever medical verdict that is tampering with your fruitfulness is hereby subdued today in the name of Jesus. Shortly after that, this same woman said we were set for another child and then another war rose again. There was no sign, no indication of any child. They came for a service like this where it was declared fruitful and this woman stood in the gap. First month, second month, third month, no sign. They went for checkup. Pregnancy test, negative. Blood test, negative. Several hospitals, negative. And then this woman said, even my husband didn't believe me. But I went and announced in my office that I'm pregnant. And then suddenly, six months after, the stomach started coming out. The stomach started coming out. Please don't be moved by sight. For we are not people walking by sight, but by faith. Everyone called unfruitful. I declare you fruitful today. That was it. Nine months after, the child came, a baby boy. And then it was time for them to have their third or last child. And the third child, it was the same process. This time around, there was no sign again. And the husband started speaking to the wife. The second one, it was the wife speaking to herself. The third one, the husband said, I have to take my place as a man. He started speaking to the wife. And the wife conceived. Now they have three children. One deaconess, uh, you know, Ola Tuboso was the one who shared this testimony, wrote this testimony. I don't care what medical verdict is upon you. Today, my God will override all those verdicts. A number of us had the testimony of a woman a few months ago, maybe early this year or late last year, who after having the first child, 16-year-old child, she came to church like this and she had me say, after this service, start calling all the people who say you cannot have a child and start telling them that you are pregnant. Don't tell them I will have a child. Tell them I am pregnant. Don't tell them I will be pregnant. Tell them I am pregnant. Because God's word became flesh. And she started calling the relations, I'm pregnant. And they said they were laughing at her. Where is the tummy? The tummy is not. And she said to them, it's nine months now. Wait until after nine months. If you don't see a child, then you can be abusing me. And then suddenly the stomach started coming out. And then she herself, her first son of 16 year old, and the new baby came to the altar to share their testimony. I don't care how long it has been, delay upon delay, miscarriage upon discourage, finally, 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 today begins the day of your conception in the nine months time, you are bringing forth your children here. Our associate pastor was sharing the testimony last Tuesday, last Wednesday. For five years, they had no child. 
and himself and his wife began to declare they began to declare they began to declare one after the other they have two boys now one after the other they have two boys right now one after the other they began to declare you need to speak against every medical verdict don't settle down with what they told you i cannot be barren i cannot be unfruitful i am a blessed child of god shout hallelujah pastor okoro is here how many years was your own huh? five years nine years after nine years the lord blessed him with a child joel is here after how many years after eight years god blessed him with a child ezekiel is here after 16 years of the first child triplets come here come here all of you that i mentioned come here come here come here i'd like you to point your hand here lord you who did this for these pastors do my own today do my own today do for the, my family today do it for my family today if you are standing in the gap any member of your family every barrenness every unfruitfulness must stop in your family lord you did it for this pastor you are doing for everyone expecting their miracle children in this assembly you are doing it for them you are doing it for them you are doing it for them nine months time their miracle children are coming after five years after seven years after nine years after 16 years you did it thank you lord in jesus precious name we are prayed please get back to your seat every unfruitful career every unfruitful business stretch your hands here now now you are standing on the ground of a fruitful ministry this ministry is extremely fruitful you must be fruitful I decree that your season of dryness in your career in your business finally comes to an end in the name of Jesus the Lord told me that this week you will have amazing wonders so shall it be give God a big clap and take your seat please take your seat if you came with your baby items or any other point of contact put it on the floor before you put it on the floor before you right now they are receiving power those children must come those blessings must come this time around there is no hitch of any kind no failure of any kind now we have been doing a series of teaching on engaging the power of praise for a turn around everywhere praise goes there is bound to be a turn around praise is the spiritual rod that you used to turn the situation praise is the spiritual gear that you use to turn your situation around for good when praise begins a turn around commences when praise begins a turn around commences you cannot be praising God and remain on the same spot a lifestyle of praise is a lifestyle of progress praise makes destiny progressive a praising church is a progressive church a praising family is a progressive family a praising believer is a progressive family engage praise for a turn around engage in praise for a turn around shout hallelujah if praise is as important what is in it what is in praise number one say with me God is in praise Psalm 22 verse 3 God inhabits or if you like God dwells in the praises of Israel 
Every time you are praising God, you are building an habitation for God. Praise creates the atmosphere for God. God dwells in praise. If you don't want God to depart from you, don't let his praise depart out of your mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. Psalm 34 verse 1. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. If you want God continually, let his praise be in your mouth continually. If you want God in the morning, praise him in the morning. If you want him at noon time, praise him at noon time. If you want him in the evening, praise him in the evening. If you want him always, praise him always. Psalm 119 verse 164, David says, Seven times will I praise thee, O Lord, because of your righteous judgment. If you want to see God's judgment, put praise in your mouth. Let the high praise of God be in their mouth and the two edges sword in their hand so they can execute the judgment that is written. Psalm 149, verses 6, 7, 8, down the line. Let the high praise of God be in their mouth and the two edges sword in their hand to do what? To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people. When you want God to punish people, you sing his praise. You celebrate him, you dance before him, then he will begin to punish the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute the judgment that is written. This honor have all the saints who praise him, therefore praise ye the Lord. Shout amen. amen. Now hear this. Angels usually come to record our prayers they come to record our prayers but god comes to receive our praise please take note of that when you pray angels will come to record it angels comes to record your prayers but when you praise god comes down to receive it i don't know which one you prefer for angels to come or for god to come you know when the children of israel were living in egypt on their way, God said to Moses to tell them, he said, I will not go with you again. I will send my angels to go before you. <laughs> and Moses said, no, 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 no. Don't send your angels. Oh. Don't send your angels. If your presence does not go with us, we will not go. Don't send your angels. Because angels can be angry. If they hit your head, that's the end. <laughs> but for God, for the Lord is good. And his mercies endures forever. But for God to come down, praise must be engaged. For angels to come down, prayer must be engaged. For God to come down, praise must be engaged. Revelation chapter 5, verse 8. The Bible tells us about the 24 elders and the angels that worship the Lord, and they have the golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. The prayers of the saints. The prayer of the saints. They carry it before the Lord. But when we are in praise, God comes down. Psalm 47 verse 5. God is gone up with a shout. When his people begin to shout, God goes up. God goes up. He goes up for them. He stands up for them. When praise is on, God is up, standing. God does not sit down when praise is on. God sits down when prayer is on. God is never moved by any need, but he is moved by your praise. When you begin to praise him, God stands up. God goes up. And when he's coming down, he breaks all the enemies on your way. Shout hallelujah. Everybody on your way today is destroyed in the name of Jesus. What are we saying in one word? In prayer, you war to win. In praise, you watch to win. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17. As they were set to praise God, the Lord said, You shall not need to fight in this battle. When it is praise time, you don't need to fight. You shall not need to fight. You shall not need to fight in this battle. All you need to do is set yourself. Stand ye still, and you shall see the salvation of the Lord. 
which he will show to you today, O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, be not dismayed tomorrow. You will go against them, for the Lord will be with you. And what is it that they did in verse 22? When they began to praise God, as they began to sing, as they began to sing, the Lord, who told them they were not need to fight, he set ambushment against the children of Ammon and Moab and Monsiah, which will come against Judah, and they were smitten. From today, as you praise God, you will not need to shoot an arrow again. <laughs> Those who pray, war to win. Those who praise, watch to win. Believe me, every day I just watch God fight my battle for me. I can see him moving in my favor. I can see him, he's fighting my battle. I can see him. Giving me my miracle, he will do what he says he will do. I have a very big God, oh. he is always by my side. A very big God, oh. by my side. I have a very big God, oh. he is always by my side. A very big God, oh. by my side, by my side. Jehovah reigns, he reigns, he reigns. Jehovah reigns, he reigns, he reigns. Jehovah reigns, he reigns. He reigns, Jehovah reigns, he reigns, he reigns. Be thou lifted up above all that God. Oh, be thou lifted up above all that God. That's the way I watch. I just sing him. I sing him on into my battle. I sing him on into my battle. I sing him on into my battle. They call him the man of war. And every wolf fear man requires a singing don't you see even in the physical in nigeria army and other army they 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 charge themselves with singing to go into battle they get charged so when you sing god you sing god into action you sing god into the battle he is the man of war he requires a song to go to fight when you sing, he stands up and walks majestically towards your enemy and he pulls them down. Every war over your fruitfulness is finally won in your favor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number two, what is in praise? Anointing is in praise. Anointing is in praise. The more we praise him, the more praiseful we are, the more anointed we become to triumph. The more praiseful we are, the more anointed we become to triumph. We cannot again but make reference to Psalm 92, verses 1 to 3. It's a good thing to sing, to, 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 to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise on their name, O Most High, to talk of your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness at night. Upon the instruments of psaltery, of ten strings, and upon the psaltery, upon the harp, and the solemn sound. And as we do that, in verse 10, my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of the unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Praise is invitation to fresh anointing. Praise is the gateway to fresh anointing. And in the process, in verse 11, execution or judgment commences. Man, I with this new anointing, my eye also shall see my desire of my enemies, and mine ear shall hear of my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. When you are anointed, all who rise against you bow before you. The anointing is in praise. The anointing is in praise. Now, Jacob had 12 songs, one of them very prominent is called judah judah means praise judah was always excelling every time it goes to war if you read from psalm 49 verses 8 and 9 you have the details there he said your hands shall be upon the neck of your enemies then when it was time for israel to go to war in the book of judges in the book of Judges, it was time to go to war. In verse 1, the children of Israel went before the Lord and said, Who shall go for us? Judges chapter 1, from verses 1 to 4. They went before the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against the Canaanites? First, who shall go up first? 
to fight against them. And in verse 2, the Lord specifically said to them, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have delivered the land into his hand. Praise shall go first. When you make praise first, the battle becomes a walkover. Judah shall go first. And in verse 4, Judah went up and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand. And they slew of them in Bisek 10,000 men. When praise goes up, the enemies are slaughtered. When praise goes up, the enemies are slaughtered. It is praise that takes delivery. Praise takes delivery. Praise takes delivery. Praise does not lose any battle. Praise is anointed to win all of the time. So the more praiseful you are, the freshly anointed you become as a businessman. Don't leave your house in the morning without singing praise. Because after singing, all oppositions are greeting you. You are welcome, sir. What can we do for you today? You are welcome, sir. What can you do for you today? You have prayed and prayed. Now switch to singing. Paul and Silas prayed. The answer was looking too slow. But when they sang praises, suddenly something took place. Acts of the Apostles chapter 16, verse 25 to 26. Suddenly, prayer may do it slowly, but praise will do it suddenly. Prayer may do it slowly, but praise will do it suddenly. Today, as you go from here, sudden amazing events will take place in your life this week. Somebody who believes, will you roar a loud amen? This week, you will hear that every opposition against you are already cleared out of the way. As you praise God today, some of you, you are having some physical opposition. Don't be surprised to hear that this week somebody is removed from office for your sake. Hallelujah. All your troublers are in trouble. All your oppressors are under oppression. All your tormentors are under tribulations. Judah shall go up first. Let praise go up first. When you wake up, praise first. Praise first. Anything that began with praise will be completed successfully. Anything that began with praise may not even require one more prayer for it to be done. Let praise go up. Let Judah go up. Let Judah go up and all the necks of the enemies will come down. Raise your hand and say, I praise God. I, praise God. I didn't hear it loud enough. Louder still, somebody. Now, number three, what is in praise? Say with me, harvest is in praise. I didn't hear you very well. Psalm 67, verses 5 to 7. Let the people praise thee, O Lord. And let all the people who care to praise thee. And what will happen then? Say with me, then. I like that word. Is a linkage between verses 5 and 6. Then. That means something previously must be done. This is what happens after you do that thing. Then shall the hearts yield. Ah, increase. There's an increase that the enemy has covered. Only praise can make it yield. To yield means to release. Your blessings are waiting to be released. It is praise that grants the release. When you praise, release is granted. It shall yield an increase. And I mean God who is behind the release, our own God shall bless us to a point, verse 7, that the ends of the heart shall fear him. That means the blessing God will give to those who praise him are so fearful, so fearful, so terrific, so fearful that everybody will hear of it and bow to him. 
when we yield to praise, our hearts yields to harvest. I'd like to repeat that again. When we yield to praise, our hearts will yield to harvest. So your heart is waiting for you. Your increase is waiting for you. When you pray, your blessing lifts the hand of God. When you praise, then the blessing is released to you. When you pray, your blessing lifts the hand of God. The answer lifts the hand of God when you pray. But when you praise, the blessings are released. So the release of your blessing is at the mercy of your praise. Stop saying, I'm waiting for my blessing. Rather, your blessing is waiting for you. Your blessing is waiting for you when you do the will of God, which is thanksgiving, which is praise. Then you shall obtain the blessing. You shall obtain the promise. Then shall the heart yield the increase. Shout hallelujah. Somebody's baby is locked up somewhere as you begin to praise him. As I said in the first service, you see, when we praise God, our organs, our organs, internal and external organs, responds to praise. Because everything responds to praise. Joel chapter 1 verse 12. Everything responds to praise. As you are praising him, your organs are revitalized, re-energized, re-empowered. Abraham and Sarah were praising God even though they were both dead in their body. They were dead. It was hopeless. Romans chapter 4, verses 19 and 20, beginning from verse 18, of course, they had no hope, but they hoped against hope. And then in verse 19, Abraham's body was dead. The Sarah's womb was dead. Dead, dead, dead. Everything around, dead, dead. Everything dead. But they staggered not at the promise of God. Through unbelief, that is through medical facts, they did not stagger. They did not stagger. The whole essence of medical verdict is to make you live in unbelief. They had unbelief staring on their faces. Medical reports. What, what, what other way can you describe a situation as dead? If you say it's 16% alive, that's all right. But you now say something is dead. That is forget it. Don't think of it. Forget it. Abraham said we will not forget it. They were not. They were strong in the faith, giving glory to God. And as they were giving glory to God, God was energizing their body. The dead issues were coming back to life. For he will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the people praise thee, O Lord. And as they praise thee, let them praise him in the dance. Psalm 149, verse 3. Let them praise him in the dance. And as they are praising him in the dance, Verse 4, he said, he will beautify the meek with salvation. He will take pleasure in them. See, when you praise God in the dance, he takes pleasure in you. And as a result, he beautifies you with salvation, with redemption, with restoration. He gives to you the things that are missing. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> Harvest. Harvest of children. Harvest of breakthroughs, harvest of open doors, harvest of promotion. The more praiseful we are, the more fruitful we become. The more praiseful we are, the most harvestful we become. Shout hallelujah. And finally, number four, what is in praise? Say with me, speed is in praise. Say it again, speed is in praise. <laughs> praise will always lead to speed. If you are having slow down, engage in praise. Praise is accelerator. When you see business slowing down, praise God for it. For when men are cast down, that shall say there's a lifting up. Praise creates atmosphere for speed. God's wonders are limited to man's praise. God will go only as far as your praise goes. If you stop praising, God stops. If you praise him more, God goes more. That's why 
Jesus speaking. He said, when I'm lifted, I will draw men unto me. John 12, 32, God goes up with a shout. Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 to 19. Although the fig tree does not blossom, there will be no fruit in the vine, neither shall be fruit in the vines, the labor of the whole leaf shall fail, the fields shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. I don't care about all of that, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will join the God of my salvation, and in the process of doing that, the Lord will stand up and be my strength, and he will make my feet like hind's feet. The hind is an animal renowned for speed. He will make my feet like hind's feet to a point that he will make me to walk upon my high places. Praise always guarantees speed. Praise always destroys slow motion. If things are moving slowly, don't join other Nigerians to say things are slow. Things are not slow for you. Say with me, they are not slow for me. Say it vehemently. Say it angrily. How are things going for you? Say with me speedily. This week you will experience speed. How are things going for you? Hey, you mean that's the best way you can say it? How are things going for you this week? You will see it so. How do you see? I will rejoice in the Lord my God. I will rejoice in the Lord and be glad. I will rejoice and be glad. I lift up my voice to sing praise to my God. This is the day he has made. I will rejoice and be glad in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad. I lift up my voice to sing praise to the Lord. For this is the day he has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice, I will rejoice for I've made my choice to rejoice in the Lord. I will rejoice, I will rejoice, I will rejoice for I've made my choice to rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. As you do so, it will make you to walk upon your high places. This week, Satan will be slapped on his two cheeks in your favor. This week, those who think you will remain on the floor will find you flying in the air. This week, your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. This week, as praise goes up, all your enemies shall be slain down. Give God a big shout of amen. As I close right now, you are here this morning, you know you are not born again. Something tells you on your inside, you don't have a relationship with God. Maybe you've been coming to church here before, but you know you are not born again. You only come to church, you enjoy the singing, you enjoy the dancing. Maybe you are even getting used to the language. You are blessed, you are blessed, you are blessed. Double portion, next level. But you know you are not born again. You know you are not born again. You know you are not in tune with God. I know you don't want to be an hypocrite. I know you want to make a quality decision to surrender your life to Jesus. Wherever you are, I want to pray for you right now. Open up your heart. Let Jesus save you. Make a change. Make a turn so that God can turn to you and make everything turn in your favor. Stand to your feet. You want to be born again. God bless you. God bless you. Stand to your feet. God bless you. Somebody invited you. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. I must commend you for your sincerity, for your determination. Also, this morning, somebody made this decision before but somehow you found yourself sliding back. You found yourself giving up. You decided you will follow Jesus, but somehow you couldn't follow him through. Some situations arose. You found yourself on the floor. You found yourself going back. But today you want to renew your decision. You want to renew and rededicate your life to Jesus. You are also welcome. You are also accepted. God is not condemning you. Don't feel condemned. He will raise you up again. 
you may fall sometimes. Jesus said he will raise you up again. Wherever you are, you want to be restored back to the faith. You want to return back home like the prodigal son. Stand to your feet as well. 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 God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now, all of you standing up, it will be my joy and my delight to have you come to the altar here so I can see you closely and pray with you very closely. All of you who have stood up and those of you who will join them. Somebody is still seated. You need to be up right now and come to the altar. Carry your Bible, everything you came to church with, and start coming to the altar here right now. Church, get excited as you are coming. Get excited as you are coming. Give God the glory. When I'm lifted, I will draw men unto me. Lift up Jesus. Some of them are running down, running down, running down, running down, running down. Quickly, run for salvation wherever you are. Somebody is still seated. You better quickly stand up. Others have left you behind. Come quickly to the altar. I don't know who you are. Whosoever you may be, Jesus is showing you mercy. No one is too bad for him. No one is too good for him. God bless you. There are a few more people who are seated. Something tells you you must stand up and be here. Don't remain seated there. Don't disobey the things working for your destiny. Jesus is working for your destiny. Don't camp with the enemy. God bless you for standing up. More people are standing up right now. Can you see what Jesus is doing? I thought you are clapping for my Jesus, the winner. Satan, you have no power over these people. Some people are still standing up right now. Oh, can you see what Jesus is doing? More people are standing up. I thought the church is excited. Jesus is touching more lives. Jesus is touching more souls. Jesus is winning more people. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Something tells me there are still some people sitting out there. Somebody is still sitting down there. You, are, you have no business remaining seated there. You ought to be in front here right now. Stand up right now by the authority in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of indecision holding you down. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Can you see them? They are still standing up. They are running down here because Jesus is winning and Satan is losing. Thank you. More people from the back. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wave your hand, church, and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. From the gallery, some people are still coming. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Now, all of you in front here, you have made the best decision of your life ever. Can I ask you to please bow your heads, all of you in front here. Bow your heads in prayer. Lift up your right hand. All of you in front here, you are praying the best prayer of your life ever. Somebody is still coming to join them. You pray as you come. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today asking for your mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I need your touch. I believe in you right now. You died for me. On the third day, you rose again for my justification. Now I receive that justification, that forgiveness, that salvation. Thank you for giving it to me because I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, these souls are received into your kingdom and we declare that Satan has no more power over them in Jesus' wonderful name. And all of you in front here with a smile on your face, say with me, I am now born again.
my fruitfulness. Thank you, Jesus. In my body, in the works of my hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Now, get your bottle of oil with you right now and place a portion of it in your right palm. If your neighbor does not help, please quickly help out. Help out. Help out. No barrenness will be traceable to you and your family again. Please come and help me with some here. Every one of you standing before the Lord, either in front of the altar here or wherever you are standing, this day brings an end to any form of miscarriage. No more steel bars in your family. No more loss of any pregnancy. They have been asking, when will it happen? When will it happen? Now it has happened. Now, now it has happened. Now it has happened. Now all your mockers will soon join you in celebration. Finally, finally, joy shall be restored to your family. Finally, finally, your miracle children are arriving. Finally, finally, the male, the female, the single, the twins, the triplets, the quadruplets, Arriving in the name, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So shall it be. And for every career and business here, your season of dryness is finally over. Your slow motion is receiving anointing for acceleration today. In Jesus' precious name. Yeah. So shall it be. Yeah. Now take it on your forehead and pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Raise your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 Pray in the Holy Ghost.
precious name we are praying. Now! <laughs> you are anointed to flourish. You are anointed for fatness. You are anointed to flourish. You are anointed to prosper. You are anointed to be fruitful. In Jesus' wonderful name. It is done. Now, you feel free to take a shot of this on your lead. Take it in. Whatever is inside obstructing your fruitfulness is hereby destroyed. Take a shot of it. It is blessed and sanctified in Jesus' precious name. And as you do, please start going back to your seat, dancing and praising God again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We'll be praising God some more. There are people who have received healing here. Some healings have taken place. Some miracles have taken place. I'd like you to begin to check your body. Begin to check your body because very shortly you'll be coming out to share your testimony. Every time Jesus touched people, he expects them to come to the altar or to him to come and share their testimony. One leper saw. He saw. He saw what happened. He didn't see everything, but he saw something. Don't wait to see everything before you testify. You saw something. You want to come out and testify of it. Don't wait to see everything. If you have seen something, something began to take place in your body, you just jump out here and come and share your testimony. Don't waste time. We have just limited time because we need to start the touch service right now. Quiet, sing again, sing with life, sing quickly, and then we move on.